welcome to our special coverage on the Australian federal election 2022. Today we'll be discussing Indian community's perspective on the election. We have with us Mr. Manoj Kumar, who is affiliated with the Australian Labour Party and is the chairperson of the subcontinent Friends of Labour. Welcome, Mr. Manoj. Thank you, Bikrant, and uh, nice to meet you again. What is your view on the current federal election? You know, things are heating up. And with the Albanese and uh, Morrison debates, things looks like going towards the Labour, somewhat tilting towards the Labour. So as a Labour Party member, what is your view and how do you see this election shaping up? Because the first thing in this election is very important, whether it is for the uh, perspective of subcontinental people and uh, Australian people at large, is the job. Again, people are behind the job, then cost of living, then uh, education, healthcare, climate. One, every third Australian wants to have a view on pol from the political party what they are going to do on the climate uh, to protect the climate change. Our Labour Party leader, Albaniji, he had already mentioned that he is going to have zero emission by 2050 and by 2030, 48% of emission cut by different various ways. And it's not just he saw the, he said the thing, he is also putting like 10,000 apprenticeship in the renewable and clean energy sector so that that skills will work in this field to ensure that the cut what we are committing is going to be insured. So these are the things. Another thing is the healthcare. Definitely they are going to put $2.5 billion on the age care and others. So it's a very good initiative. Then uh, emergency healthcare, 50 urgent care clinics which is a very important thing, especially for the like the migrant people, because they don't need to go to emergency department in the hospital. They are like connected to the GP and most many GP, they speak multicultural language. So it is good to have like, you know, most of the urgent care, which we are going for the, uh, for which we are going into hospital at the medical center. So this is the good initiative. Apart from that, for the, I mean, uh, for a young generation housing, they are going to like 40% partnership going to give in uh, new and 30% in old housing. So there are a lot of community related, like the policy which labor has put, they are directly related to day by day requirement of the people, Australian people. And that is why people have realized this is the time we need a change and we must support Labour. They are expecting the Labour government after this election. Thank you. Okay, so Manoj, uh, yeah, there are lots of interesting kind of, uh, you know, plans that Labour has. But what do you think are the plans of, you know, the plans that will attract the Indian community or the subcontinental communities? And what do you think, how has Labour position itself to the growing Indian diaspora, especially? Subcontinental community like Labour had promised 20,000 uh, new uh, skills uh, space in the university. So subcontinent people are very much uh, interested, especially in the university level education. And this is a good opportunity for their children to get into the skills where they want to go. And the second thing is that the healthcare sector where subcontinental community is very much interested and the 50 community care, emergency care uh, clinic and uh, the aged care, the $2.5 billion investment in health. And apart from that, uh, in terms of uh, subcontinental people coming to Australia, Labour has rejected the visitor, uh, visiting guest worker. Labour has always supported and uh, supporting like those who are coming, they should have a migrant visa and they should share the value of Australia and as a citizen, whatever available for everyone. So this is, these are the few initiatives which 
has attracted migrant people, including the people from subcontinent, Indian and others. Okay, so do you think uh, the political parties and especially labor is paying due attention to the growing Indian diaspora? And are they taking into account the needs of the Indian community? Because we haven't seen many Indian, you know, uh, you know, Indian origin people being given uh, tickets from the labor as compared to liberal. You know, why is that happening this time? Because first of all, no any political party, especially labor and liberal, forget other, they will ignore the subcontinental community and especially Indian community. They can't afford to. Even as you said, they are not given ticket to contest the election because definitely it is the way of competitive things because they are limited, like 40 seat or 30 seat. You can't give ticket to everyone. So, and those you are giving the ticket, they have to also perform into parliament. So it's not just like you know, give the ticket on the basis of like they some particular community. So definitely it is a competitive matter, but at the same time, everyone is the voter. So they can't ignore this community. Everyone is trying to attract the community towards their side. And the community has a good power at the moment and going to be in the future. But the Indian community is going to be a deciding factor in the election in coming future. So that's the very good, like, you know, from the community point of view, it's a good news and community is capitalizing their, like, you know, capability, skills and uh, their power in terms of vote in the eyes of both political party. As far as liberal is concerned, I don't understand whether the liberal party has enough candidate and enough worker because they are putting, like, I saw that, 10 to 12 people they are contesting in most of the seat means the party has not even that much worker or what, I don't know. It's that party concern, but as far as labor is concerned, labor has given ticket to few people, but at the same time, the ticket is decided by the local body or our central panel. And there is a system in the labor party. So labor party cannot give the, the way like liberal is distributing the ticket. So different way, but labor care for the every community, those who works and believe in the labor values. Okay. So we have seen too much of, you know, both the political parties posturing has been more towards the religious places of the subcontinental people. You know, it is temple, mosques, gurudwaras, you name it. And the political parties and political leaders are, you know, trying to use those as center stages for themselves. But do you think it's the right way to approach uh, the needs of the community and uh, would you? what would be your advice in future how uh, political parties should, uh, you know, uh, engage with the community in a wider level beyond just tokenism? See, initially I was also involved supporting temple and all that and still I'm involved to like, the, we need funding in that, but at the same time, not any political party should think if they are going visiting the temple or uh, religious places and uh, they are uh, organizing funding for that does not mean that that will convert into the votes. Because every individual, it is an educated community, every individual, they, are, they have their own values. They think in their own way and they can't like vote the way someone will tell. Yes, in few organizations, it could be divert 10, 20 votes but not more than that. You have been raising issues of climate change and working on environmental issues, especially in terms of Australia-India relations. So how much is this issue dominating the election? I think uh, India and Australia is very well organ at the moment connected, especially for the trade and mutual understanding, helping each other. Whether it, is it will be a liberal government or it will come a liberal government, we don't know. But the relationship will be the same because, as you know, in Australia, we don't have any much difference in foreign policy. So definitely, India ha India is already struggling through a lot of climate issue and especially with the air pollution. And Australia is capitalizing more technological uh, advancement in those, those fields. 
and also especially the labor government is committing more for climate change of course in fact liberal has also committed to have a zero emission by 2050 so let's see but definitely australian people are also concerned about the climate the way bush fire and flood all have been affecting this country so definitely it's a key agenda not for just indian people for all and good to uh, they are going to share like you know technology and uh, solution between these two countries so that could also will be more beneficial for the people from subcontinent and back home their people thanks a lot manoj for joining us and to give some of your perspective of how this election is unfolding and what do you see is important for the indian community here in australia so we'll continue our discussion later on as well with you thanks so much for joining us thank you vikram